Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences presents its 34th Annual Achievement Awards. Santa Monica, California. Since early morning, crowds have been gathering here outside the Civic Auditorium in anticipation of the ceremonies which will begin inside shortly. You will join the members of the Academy and the International Press Corps covering this event as the motion picture industry honors the creators of the world's finest entertainment. For you are the guest of the Academy. motion pictures are made, people who make them have gathered here for the Academy Awards program, which begins now with the Star Spangled Banner, sung by Miss Mary Costa. on award-winning themes by Steiner, Newman, Rocha, and Gold, arranged by Alexander Courage, the Oscar Fantasy Overture Number 1, Johnny Green conducting. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, Mr. Wendell Corey. Our fellow members of the Academy, honored guests, and friends everywhere. It is customary at this time for the president to bring you a message from the Academy Board of Governors. Tonight, the message is brief. Welcome all to our 34th annual awards. While we hope you will be entertained, this is primarily a news event, in the course of which tomorrow's page one headlines will be made. For 34 years, the Academy's essential purpose has been to honor, we trust with dignity, the outstanding film achievements of the past year. The motion picture audience throughout the world, even at this moment, is rewarding in its own way the artists and artisans who made our films with applause, laughter, and above all, its attendance in ever-increasing numbers. Now, the men and women who created those films meet the re to reward the best in each category with the highest accolade our profession can bestow, the Academy Oscar. Over 2,500 members of the Academy have marked secret ballots and mailed them to the account accounting firm of Price, Waterhouse & Company. There, they were tabulated and the final results compiled by one man, who is by now a familiar figure to us all, Mr. Bill Miller. Mr. Corey, here's your certificate that Price Waterhouse has tabulated the ballots, and I have the results here in these envelopes. Thank you, Bill. At this moment, Bill Miller is the only man in the world who knows the names inside those ballots. And from experience, we've learned he not only won't talk, but he is the world's best poker player. But we've also learned that there's no contest in the selection of our master ceremonies. So, once again, here is a member of our community who, like many of us, has a lovely family, a nice home, plays a fair game of golf, and manages to find work. He's just an average citizen, except that when you add his charm, his talent, and his warm heart, you've got the nicest guy in town when he manages to get back here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bob Hope. Thank you very much, President, Wendell Corey, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Judgment at Santa Monica. <laughs> yes, here we are in Santa Monica for the real West Side Story. That's what I like about our industry. The big moment for Hollywood movies comes to you from Santa Monica on television. <laughs> We're located just a few feet from the magnificent Blue Pacific. In fact, we left the side door open so the cast of Mutiny on the Bounty could wade ashore. <laughs> this is an exciting night, the moment we've all been waiting for. In just a few hours, the Dodgers' new ballpark will be open. <laughs> now this is the night when the entire nation's eyes are on Hollywood. The Kennedys even gave their travel agent the night off. <laughs> this is the 34th Annual Academy Awards Presentations. For you, the Academy Awards. For me, shock theater. <laughs> but here I am again, giving out the Oscars and smiling. I'm something new, a method loser. <laughs> no, I'm a two-time loser. This year, not only wasn't I nominated, on Hollywood Boulevard, they just put a manhole cover over my star. <laughs> but my agent said, don't worry about not getting an Oscar this time. Remember, you're still young. <laughs> That's the good thing about having a 95-year-old agent. <laughs> but this is a wonderful, friendly industry. In the lobby before the show, everyone was shaking hands and smiling. And in a few minutes, the suspense will be over. We'll all know who to hate. <laughs> and the losers are going to be good sports. We know that. But just in case, the applause has been pre-recorded. <laughs> well, what a turnout. Everybody's here tonight. Everybody except George Scott. <laughs> He's sitting at home with his back to the set. <laughs> he's, 
please the one person in our audience who will come back into the room for the commercials. <laughs> you remember George Scott? He's the actor who said if he wins an Oscar, he's not going to accept it. And Hollywood needs more people like him. If enough people refuse Oscars, maybe I'll get one. <laughs> he accused Hollywood of being obsessed with the Oscars. Isn't that silly? I remember a couple of days last July when nobody even mentioned it. By the way, this telecast is being taped for later showing to our actors overseas. <laughs> It'll be the first time the rerun will have a bigger audience than the original. There's a lot of pictures being made overseas. Nobody reads for a part anymore. Now it depends on how you react to a type of shock. There are very few homes in Beverly Hills that don't have someone near and dear overseas. Today, if you see a star in the window, it means he's not working. <laughs> they finally finished making The Longest Day in France, and President Kennedy is very happy about it. He can take a firmer stand in Berlin now that Xanax given us our army back. <laughs> and we're all delighted that Grace Kelly is coming back to Hollywood from Monte Carlo. It's too bad she couldn't be here tonight for some real gambling. <laughs> Imagine a princess making a picture. It proves once and for all how democratic money really is. <laughs> But I'm thrilled about it. We need royalty in Hollywood. Something has to stem the tide of soupy sales. <laughs> It's a cultural exchange. She's coming over to make a picture for Hitchcock, and in return, he's going over there and work as a blackjack dealer. <laughs> Confidentially, the real reason she's coming back is Monaco needs the money the roulette wheel is paying off. It's been a lean year for the casino. Jack Warner stayed home. <laughs> but I'm sorry that Jackie Gleason couldn't get out to the coast for the awards tonight. He planned to fly, but TWA couldn't get him off the ground. <laughs> Jackie's afraid of planes and vice versa. But there have been notable performances this past year. Sophia Loren was nominated for two women, and I certainly think she is. <laughs> and how about Maximilian Schell getting nominated for Judgment at Nuremberg? Wonderful performance, sort of a Swiss Perry Mason. And Charles Boyer may win it for his fanny. <laughs> and you never know, because Stuart Whitman played a degenerate and got nominated. I make a U-turn and get arrested. <laughs> But there have been some great pictures this year. There's The Hustler, that's about Bing's obstetrician. <laughs> Guns of Navarone, How to Win a War with Special Effects. Splendor in the Grass, about Splendor in the Grass. <laughs> and La Dolce Vita, What to Do Until the Spaghetti's Ready. <laughs> West Side Story is about teenagers who carve each other up with switchblades. It's the best musical of the year. <laughs> It's the first time I ever saw a gang war and came out whistling the tunes. <laughs> Now, this past year, motion pictures got more and more mature. Today, children can go into a theater and see things they used to get their faces slapped for asking about. <laughs> the new pictures really are adult. Who ever thought Tennessee Williams would be afraid to go? Now, you know, we may be getting too adult. One picture got the seal of approval, and the director said, where have we failed? <laughs> you know, this may be a very significant year in motion picture history. This may be the year they finish Mutiny and the Bounty. Just in time to stop one among the stockholders. Mutiny and the Bounty cost $18 million to make. That's over $2 a day. They have been working quite a while on it. In fact, the first hour is silent. <laughs> Then there's Cleopatra. I know everyone will want to see that one and see if life was as exciting in Egypt in those days as it is in Rome now. <laughs> Mrs. Stone isn't the only one who had a Roman spring. <laughs> It's the first time Cleopatra ever went down the Nile to Las Vegas. <laughs> I, 
I don't know how the picture is, but I'd like to make a deal for the outtakes. <laughs> it's quite a switch, isn't it? Whoever thought the Italians would learn realism from us? <laughs> and what a scene in Rome when Spiros Skouris got the final figures on the budget and stood on the steps of the forum and shouted, Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me. <laughs> for my footnotes to history. Let's start making the awards so I can have some new people to be bitter about. The first envelope will be opened by two talented stars, one of the Jones girls, Carolyn, and one of the Chakiris boys, George, a former nominee and a current one, Miss Carolyn Jones and Mr. George Chakiris. <laughs> And thank you for remembering my nomination. Well, losers never forget. No. What award are you two going to make? For a documentary film. Yeah, well, I'm putting my money on Not Tonight Henry. <laughs> <laughs> for distinctive achievements in documentary production, two features have been nominated. Le Grande Olimpiade, Olympic Games 1960, Del Istituto Nazionale Luce. And... Le Ciel et la Boue, Sky Above and Mud Beneath, Arthur Cohn and René Lafuite. And the winner is... Le Ciel et la Boue, Sky Above and Mud Beneath. Allow me, by accepting this Oscar, to pay tribute to the three technicians who have died and to the eight technicians who have been severely injured during the production of the film which you have just honored. Thank you very much, all of you. The nominees for documentary short subjects are Breaking the Language Barrier, United States Air Force. Cradle of Genius, Jim O'Connor and Tom Hayes. Carl, Dido Film. Luamo Igrigio, Man in Gray, Benedetto Benedetti. Project Hope, Frank P. Vivas. And uh, the winner, Mr. Chikaris? Yes. The winner is Project Hope, Frank P. Bibas. Members of the Academy, I'm overwhelmed, and I'm very grateful, and I appreciate this honor. Thank you very much. Italian names, the studio must be packing pizzas in location lunches. 